All right, welcome everybody. I'm, I'm super excited that a bunch of you were able to come back today for our Xerti workshop. And we have here Inga Donkvort. She's uh, the director of D-Learning and she's been uh, supporting um, Xerti for, for quite a while. Um, it's, it's quite popular in the UK and in the Netherlands and we're hoping to kind of spread the word um, on this side of the pond. So um, she's going to take us through Xerti, show you a little bit about what it can do, some examples of content created using Xerti, and then we're actually going to dive into um, the Xerti software. We have accounts set up for you guys to go in and play with it and create like a, a sample um, object. And then I'll, I'll show you a little bit about how you can plug those into Sakai with LTI. So I'm going to turn it over to Inga and um, she's going to tell us all about Xerti. Yes, um, and I'm going to, um, now you can see me a bit, um, I'm going to uh, hide my sh uh, screen sharing or screen sharing, my webcam, um, so we have more room for the module itself. Um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, uh, talk to you a bit through uh, about Xerti. Um, I work with Xerti for, uh, I think, more than 15 years now, and I really love it. I'm also a member of the Xerti team and, um, and the Xerti uh, development team. And with a, a bunch of very enthusiastic people all over the world, we develop Xerti. Xerti is uh, also like uh, Sakai, uh, an Imperio Foundation member, um, and also completely open source. Um, so. That's why we work with an enthusiastic group of people to 30. And we're happy that um, Wilma and Joshua from Longside are also joining us um, in the 30 community. Um, what are we going to do today? Um, I'm going to tell you a bit of a background and what it can do and uh, show a few examples. But I hope we have a lot of time to work in 30. Um, and that you can create your own module, put it in Sakai and uh, see the results back in the great book. So that's a bit of what we are going to do. Um, but before we do that, I have made a module. I put a link in the chat. Um, that's the link of the presentation today. So if you want to look at it later, then you have that uh, information also. There's a also a lot of information about Xerti in this uh, module. This is, um, by the way, also a Xerti module that I used um, to create this presentation in. And in this module, you can uh, go from page to page uh, and navigate uh, with the buttons here below, but you can also create buttons on the page itself and navigate in that way or by clicking on an image. Um, so you have a lot of ways to, to navigate within the module. In this case, it's... Um, how do you call it, um, uh, one page after one another. Um, so it's not historical, but um, there is an English word for it. I don't know it, but page uh, to page. Um, Xerti is an authoring tool where you can create a media-rich, interactive, accessible um, learning, online learning modules with. Um, it's very easy to use. Um, you have a sort of a wizard that you can fill in and then you created a page. I will show the, that to you later. Um, those, uh, you, you can uh, work on it alone, but you can also work on it with a theme. So you can uh, share the modules. And it's also very easy to share between um, organizations. So, for example, uh, organization A has an Xerti installation and organization B has a has also a Xerti installation, then it's very easy to um, to share and reuse each other's learning modules. And sometimes that's very um, handy to do. Um, so here are a few things that you can do with Xerti. It's easy to add content. This is, by the way, a flip, um, flip card. Uh, but it's also a page in Xerti that you can use. It's easy to add content and you can create a module by placing content in the input screen. So I'm, I called it the wizard, but the uh, input screen is the same. If I click on the image, it enlarges so I can see 
the image better. And the only thing I did in this case was adding the flip card, um, a flashcard page, add my content in, and I created the flashcard as you can see here. It's my other flashcards. One moment. Yes. Um, you can create media rich uh, pages. So you can add audio, you can add video, you can add quizzes, uh, hotspots, interactive video, slideshows, uh, images, all kinds of things um, you can add to the pages and to the different um, interactivities. And we will show you later also how you can do that. Where can you use it for? Um, you can use it, for example, uh, when you have classroom learning to the di differ differentiation. Um, so the students that are below or that are ahead uh, also have uh, learning materials that they can work on. Um, personalization and adaptive learning. It is possible to create a, an adaptive learning path with 30. So they do a module, the result is X, and based on that result, they go to uh, a new module, what is um, with more information or to do it again. Um, you can create a whole path of that, that. I don't know if you can do that in Sakai as well, but uh, I tell this, um, I tell what you can do in 30. Um, uh, 30, where is it from? Uh, if you have any questions, please add them in the chat if you uh, want. Uh, 30 stands for XML Editor Runtime Engine. Um, but later on, we discovered that it also means to know, to know or joyful in Greek. And that's a nice uh, meaning of the word 30. But uh, it uh, came from this, it's very technical. You can collabor collaborate with others. <laughs> yes, Didi, the Greek translation is cool. I think so too. Um, you can work on the same module with colleagues, uh, but you can also um, share and reuse it with others, what I already said. That is also one of the, the visions from Xerti, that uh, there is a lot of sharing and reusing between materials. And I'm going to show you a bit of a project that's in the Netherlands, where they are really uh, doing that at the moment. Um, another thing that you can do uh, in, a, in a module is uh, like this, uh, you can, can have a glossary. So for the more difficult words or the words you want to explain, you can have a glossary and uh, each time that a student comes to this page and doesn't know what the word means, he can uh, hover it and get the meaning of it. And um, you can add Xerti to your organization's learning environment. So in this case, you're uh, probably all working with Sakai. It's very easy to create something in Xerti and then add it to your Sakai installation as uh, a learning object. Uh, Wilma, I see some questions, but I see that you uh, answer them. If there's something that you can't answer, then please break in my session. Then uh, I will explain it. Um, these are some examples I already showed yesterday, but yesterday I showed a few. Um, you have different templates in Xerti where you can create um, online learning content of. In this case, this is the Xerti Online Toolkits template. Um, and I already showed this one, but uh, this is the same as I use for my presentation. You can click through it and um, you get uh, some um, interactivities, some information, images, and all kinds of uh, things like that. This is the one we are going to create, one of uh, a Xerti Online Toolkits template are we going to make later on. Um, yesterday, I also showed you the uh, 360 media page, but there's also a cool um, page that's called the inter interactive video page. Um, I'm going to open it. I can have some information. Um, 
but when I start this video, and this this is a video I added to 30 itself, but it can also be a YouTube video or a Vimeo p video or PeerTube. Um, you can add all those links to this page, and then on that video, for example, a cool video from Vime, uh, from YouTube, you can add interactivities on. And when I still start this one, I will out the audio. Um, you see here below, you see the small uh, uh, dots, and on each dot, there will be some um, an, an activity. In this case, there is some text that's explaining what this is. And then I go on, then this will uh, disappear, and we go to the next dot. And the next dot is... Um, information in this case a uh, question so i can answer the question and based on the answers in this case i get feedback i can uh, add feedback here as a teacher um, uh, in this case it's your answer is incorrect but it could be more an explanation and when i click on continue the video goes on and this will disappear um, it's also possible that on this uh, answer, I go to another place in the video. So, uh, for example, if this was a question about uh, where do you want to know something about, and um, there are so, uh, subjects here, you can skip uh, the rest of the video and uh, jump to the next uh, subject you want to see. So, um, this is the interactive video. This is a very easy page to uh, create, so I will show you later also how you can create this page. Um, I'm going yeah, back to the... a question about um, branching scenarios, and I mentioned that there's a decision tree template, but I thought you might want to get more information on that. Uh, it, it's the question from Jack. With adaptive mm -hmm. learning, does that mean you can create branch interaction? Um, yes, um, you can have uh, several uh, modules connected to each other um, and have a branch like that. But what you also can do is uh, use the uh, decision tree template. But uh, that's not um, the results of that are not. Uh, 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 shared in the grade book or in the in the dashboard, so uh, you have several ways to do that. Okay, um, I go on another uh, template we have in Surti is the Bootstrap template. So I showed you a template with all kind of uh, interactions, and you go from page to page, but you can also create. Um, many websites and for example uh, this one i showed you yesterday this this is um, an organization that created um, um, a mini website on the subject animations using animations in the vocational education and it's just one page uh, but with all kind of information where can you find animations how do you create animations um, how does it work with free or not free? What are the learning goals? All videos are added. Um, and as you see, here are no uh, interactivities in the bootstrap template. So the Set Online Toolkits template is with interactivities and the bootstrap template is more a website and it's without interactivities. We are not going to work on this one, but you have a, a link to an install later, so you can try it. Um, what is also a very uh, nice thing to show you is that there are organizations that don't use it for, um, let me see where it is. Oh, here it is. They don't use Xerti for um, only for learning, but also, for example, to sending out a newsletter. In this case, um, this is newsletter one, uh, this organization uses Surte and they make a newsletter about Surte for their uh, um, teachers. Um, and there they tell all kinds of things about Surte, new pages, people who use it, uh, um, nice new uh, learning objects that are made. And each month they have a new newsletter. So, um, and sometimes they have more, I see, because we are already on 13. 
uh, with all kinds of information about uh, 30, but you can imagine that you can use it for any subject that you have in your organization. And you can also easily link this into Sakai and have this as a, uh, a newsletter within your Sakai environment. So there are a lot of examples here, and I will suggest you have the link that if you are interested in them, then please take a look at them later um, to get ideas or to see what, uh, what it can do. I told you about the, or the project that is uh, running in the Netherlands at the moment about uh, sharing and reuse content. There are, um, uh, I think, uh, something like, uh, we are a small count country, so um, we have something like 70 uh, vocational schools. There are big schools, but uh, there are 70 in total. And they are starting to share their learning objects with each other. So in this case, I have, um, a link to one of them, that's the Deltion College. And here you can see what they already made and what you can uh, use for your own benefits. Yeah, it's all in Dutch, so you don't have anything, uh, you, can, you can't use it or you have to translate it. Um, so schools, other schools can uh, shop here and see if there are um, modules that they can use and that's the same with this one. And uh, this school, that's the ROC van Amsterdam, they also have the possibility, for example, this is about, um, let me see, uh, the nerve system. And here I can look at uh, the module about the nerve system. In this case, it's a bootstrap template with all kinds of information in it. Uh, sometimes there is also, um, a link here that you can download it. Let me see, yeah, in this case, I can download this module and add it in my own uh, 30 installation. So try it out if you want. You can also go to these pages and see if uh, there's something that you like. Um, Xerti and uh, Sakai works great together and uh, most of the time they are in a sort of a learning ecosystem, we call that. In this case, you have uh, Sakai and you have Xerti and we use LTI from uh, Dr. Chuck uh, Tsugi to, to get the information from Sakai to Xerti and from Xerti back to Sakai. So that the results of a student that uh, do the Xerti module are also um, uh, stored in Sakai itself. It's only the uh, results, uh, passed or not passed. You can see more inf information about the results of the module, but that's uh, not stored in Sakai in this way. Um, you can also have uh, desperate presentations, so then you can see who answered what, when, and or how's my group doing doing, um, you have created a module and you want to work with flipped classroom. So you send it out before uh, your class is starting and you want to know what the results are, then a dashboard to look into these results for your group. Then you can see what subjects you have to uh, address and which subjects you can uh, uh, pass. Um, and we use uh, XAPI uh, LRS to um, store all the data. So a student uh, does something in Xerti, that information is all stored in uh, an LRS, a learning record store it's called. Um, and from that learning record store, all that information can be used in, uh, in dashboards. Um, and we also use uh, CAS, that's also from Aperio. So we, we uh, try to work as much as we can with Aperio tools. I see a question from Didi. Is the Bootstrap website limited in permissions for just the class? No, you can, um, when you create a module, if it's a Bootstrap or a Xerti online toolkits, uh, you can say um, if it's public, for example, everybody on Google can see it, or that it's um, only visible when you um, open it via a certain link, 
or um, there are a lot of ways that you can uh, limit it to permissions or it's open for everyone. How does it work with um, the LTI link and the Xerti module and Sakai? In this case, this is Sakai. You add a Xerti module in it. And because we work, uh, because you add the Xerti module with an LTI link, the, when the student create, um, goes through his module, the results are stored and will put automatically in the gradebook of Sakai. Um, I think um, Wilma is going to show this later, how that works. Uh, but this is the, uh, an easy way to do it. And then you don't need to know everything, how it's organized on the uh, on the back of the whole system. But this for, the, for you as a teacher or as a developer, this is enough uh, to know how you can do it. Uh, Miles asks, where, how is the results record store hosted data ownership access? Um, the LRS, the way we do it, but I don't know if that's the way, um, for example, Longsite is uh, going to do it, is that we have uh, a Xerti installation from an organization on a sort of a private cloud. And in that same private cloud, also the LRS, the learning record store, is hosted. So... Um, the data ownership is from the organization always, and it's also secured because it's in a sort of a, a private cloud solution. So in this case, our, um, all our security installations are stored in the Netherlands. Um, but uh, for you, it could be at Longside. Yeah, just already said Longside. Um, here are a few slides uh, how you can uh, add a module to Sakai. Uh, Sakai. I'm not going to show uh, this uh, very uh, uh, very much of it because Wilma is also going to show this live. Um, but you can add 30 modules uh, to lessons or to assignments. Um, you can do it with either just a link and then no results are stored, or with an external tool, and then we use that LTI thing, uh, and then the uh, results are also stored in Sakai. Um, this is a module, in this case, the digital footprint, and this is the way it's shown in Sakai. So I think it's pretty cool, uh, because if this is in Sakai, you don't see that it's an Azurity object as a student, and uh, below this, buttons, um, I can also navigate through the module. Then the results will be stored in the gradebook if you use the LTI tool. And um, if you want, it's also possible that you have a link to the uh, Xerti dashboard within Sakai. But that's uh, another thing. And this will be, uh, this is the dashboard, the Xerti dashboard, where you, where you can see the results per page and you can even zoom in per uh, answer that it's giving. So this is a, a very quick tour around how it works in Sakai, but we will co uh, come to that later. Uh, one moment, I have to cough. Is my audio any better? I've been tinkering with my microphone. Can you hear me better now? Okay. Me, so okay. Well. Yeah. Um, the Xerti uh, dashboard, um, if you use that uh, learning record store we talked about before, then you can see some results. And in an uh, overview, I will show them, them to you. So this is the front page of that dashboard. You can see here there's a launch graph. So I know when my students opened the module. Mostly that will be uh, exactly before the exams. Uh, but you hope when, when you use a flipped classroom working that they will open it before you have your first lesson, for example. And here you have some, um, some uh, highlights of that uh, course, or so the average score and the number of students. And here you see, you see all green and red things. And for example, when you use this for flipped classroom, then I see that question 1.4, I don't have to go into, there's only one student that didn't do that 
okay, but he didn't do anything. So um, we don't have to give that any attention. So, but this one, uh, 1.7, that's, um, there you have a lot of red, so maybe in your class you will address that more. You can also zoom in on a question. In this case, it's a question with only two answers, and then you can see that uh, the this answer is answered this uh, much, and this answer uh, uh, this way. But if you have more um, results, then it will also be filled in here. Uh, and so you can zoom in on the question itself for your whole group or, or for the student itself and see what he or she answered. And when I can go back here, in this case, it's uh, anonymous, but it's also possible to see the names and addresses if you have um, permission to do that. This is what the student uh, uh, itself sees. Um, in the results page, uh, and then per interaction, you get some results. Um, that could be a quiz, and it could be a, a module, module uh, an open answer question, or a hotspot question, or a question ahead on the interactive video we showed. That's all. That results are all stored, and you can see them on the results page. And a student also can see them on the results page. But as a teacher, you can zoom in on that student and see what he did. And then uh, there's the possibility to have uh, some sort of a custom dashboard. Um, for example, this is uh, an organization that uses a lot of videos where you have uh, the colors of the organization itself and also the video. Um, this is a heat map. So the video is started a lot. And here maybe um, a few of them looked a bit more, but for the rest, um, it's not uh, uh, not viewed a lot by Harry, so this is from Harry, and also the results of his questions. But this is a, um, a custom dashboard, so that's not in Zerti itself at the moment. There's a very uh, enthusiastic um, community at the moment, just like the Sakai community, the Zerti community is also very enthusiastic, and they uh, do a lot of work. Um, if you click here on this image, you go to the website and you can find all kinds of information about Zerti um, and uh, a forum and to download it and langu language packs and all kinds of information you can find there. Uh, I already um, explained a bit about the sort of templates there are in. Uh, we're going to play with it later, but there are three sorts of templates. We have the Zerti template. Uh, the Xerti Online Toolkits template, that is the one where you can uh, go through from page to page. I added an example here, and this is an example of all the pages that are within Xerti. So, for example, I go, I want to see what the media pages, what uh, the media pages are that are in Xerti. Then here I can click and see all the different kinds of media pages that are in Xerti. Um, if you're really interested in Xerti, it's good to uh, go through this particular um, learning object to see what it can do. And it's also possible to click here. And for example, when I go to the um, Media360 image page, here you see the example I showed yesterday. And the examples also work. Um, the same you can do with the bootstrap template. This is an example in English in the, uh, the look and feel from Xerti itself. Um, so you can choose this also. But you see that there are a lot of different colors and logos used. As an organization, you can have your own look and feel. So you can have your own colors, your own logo, um, your own um, uh, font size or font. Um, that's all possible. In this case, there is an, uh, uh, this is a bootstrap, so a mini website about the bootstrap template. And here you can find all kinds of things. Uh, for example, the media, what kind of media can I add? and uh, how does it looks like. Uh, you also can add, for example, PDFs. 
but are also all kind of navigators. What kind of navigators are there and how do how do they function? So um, also a nice learning object to look into if you want to know how the bootstrap works. And the last one we have, that's the decision tree template. Um, I have to, this is based on a, a European uh, project. Um, in this case, it was an environmental guide. So I go to the next page. I uh, answer my question, go to the next page. I'm just going through it. And then based on all my answers, I get a result. Uh, based on my answers, I go to another page. So there's a lot of content in here, but I, uh, I took a kind of a, a path and now this is my result. Um, but when I took another path, I get another result. So this is the decision tree template. Um, those two are most used, uh, but uh, this one is uh, sometimes used. There's also a decision tree page in the Zerti template. That you can use. Um, okay, then we got we are going to do something. Um, first, you uh, uh, I think Wilma, you can explain a bit how they can find Surti and uh, to try it. Then we are going to create a learning object. Uh, these are the pages we are going to do. But if you want to. Uh, uh, do it freely and uh, test it on your own uh, in your own way. That's also okay. I'm going to explain these pages step by step, so you you can create your first learning ob object, and then um, in the end, uh, Wilma is going to show how you can uh, add it to Sakai with an LTI link and get the results back into um, Sakai Gradebook. Um, I'm going to take back the screen share for just a moment to show people the. Um, login information. So let me take that back and um, share my screen. All right, so this is the address that you're going to go to um, to log in to Xerti. And actually, I should paste that into the, let me grab it from the slide. I'll paste it into the chat as well. Oh, so, okay. So if you go to that URL, that's um, our uh, long site Xerti instance, and you should have accounts already. Um, we've created accounts for folks at the um, the workshop today. Now, if you registered um, very late in the game, like just a few days before, if you try your login and it doesn't work, let me know in the chat, and I have a demo account that you can use. Um, but your username at this um, URL should be the, your complete email address, same email address that you used when you accessed the conference site. And your password, we gave everybody the same default password just to make it easy. It's SVC2022, and that's lowercase. Um, so if you guys want to go ahead and try to get logged in there, and then just let me know in the chat and um, it looks like Derek's in here too. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to get you logged in if you have any issues. All right, does everybody have all that info? I'm gonna hand it back to Inga so that she can um, show you a little bit more about uh, what it looks yeah, like it, once you log in. So maybe. Maybe we have to wait for um, five minutes or something that everyone can take a look and try to get in. Sure. And then I, I go to some of the questions. I see questions about accessibility in a larger sense. Um, one of the big things in Xerti is that we always check everything on accessibility. There's also an accessibility guide. Um, but sometimes there are pages or things that we can't make accessible for, for example, a blind uh, person or for a deaf person. Um, uh, but uh, in, um, in general, we try to make everything as accessible as possible. 
Um, um, if there is something that is not accessible enough, then you can uh, add that to our forum and then the developers will pick that up and try to make it accessible. Uh, what um, uh, about the colors that are used? If it's content, then it's uh, the responsibility of the creator itself. If it's the, the, the theme, uh, the, the, the top bar and the, the logo and that kind of things, then it's um, something that Certi can do something about. Okay, there were a few people that were able to log in. Okay, I put the link again. I, I think somebody mentioned that they lost track of it. It was further up in the chat. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I think Candace, you said your connection timed out. Did you just mean a big blue button maybe or? Um, Okay, she got in this time, good. Okay, so um, Ose, you need an account. Derek, are you on that? It's already active. Uh, if okay. he wanted to try again with the uh, password SVC2022, uh, try it one more time. If not, I'll go back in and uh, do an edit on your account, but it says that account is active. Okay. Is everybody in that wants to get in? Okay. Yes, so I don't see any uh, help uh, messages. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so you see my screen. Um, yes, we're seeing your screen. Yes, um, this is my workspace, and as you see, I have a lot more in it than you have. Um, the your, yours is empty. You only have a workspace and a, a recycle bin. It looks more like this. Um, to start creating a module, in this case, we are going to create a Zerti Online Toolkit. Uh, module so with all the pages and interactive pages uh, to do that you click on create and give it a name um, I call it demo but you can give it any name you want don't use any uh, the only use um, uh, uh, numbers and uh, spaces and letters um, no special signs or so that doesn't work and then click on create it can be that you have your pop-up blocker uh, working so then you have to go to your browser and say that your pop-up blocker uh, don't uh, or does allow 30. you should see it, see an empty learning object like this We are with, with a big group, so I'm going to do it step by step, but maybe uh, for some people it's too slow and for some people it's too quick. Uh, you can also look at the video later to do it step by step. Okay. So you create an empty learning object, and the first thing that we should um, make is an title page um, but this um, the page where you are now the first page with the yellow uh, block 
uh, there you, you put your configuration of the module itself. So um, in this case, I have choose the uh, language English, uh, my learning object title, I will call it a uh, demo, and uh, you will see later where that ends up. Um, and uh, I'm going to choose another theme that's in. I have a lot of themes, you have a lot less. Just pick one. I will pick the 31, that's not in yours. Uh, but pick one, the one uh, that you like. And um, this is what I meant with all the kind of themes that there could be uh, or could be created for your own organization. Um, and my navigation in this case will be linear. Um, I didn't create any page till now. So I'm going to create the first page now. To add a page to my learning object, I click on the plus sign in the left corner. And here I see a lot of um, groups with pages. For example, text, there are some pages, but also media pages. Um, as you see, Xerti is not difficult, but Xerti has a lot of choices and what could make it a bit more difficult, especially when you are a beginner, because there are so much pages, more than uh, 70 pages, which one do you choose? But um, when you do it a bit more, you uh, do this automatically and you know which page to use. In this case, we are going to add a title page. I can choose if I want it added to add it at the beginning or the end of after a page, but this is my first page, so it doesn't matter. So I say before, and I added a title page now. Um, I call this page um, title page, but maybe when you have a subject in your head where you want to create a module of, then you can call it uh, elephants or uh, my math or whatever. And here I put the title. And um, I'm going to look now what I created. And I do that by pressing play in the middle on the top. I press play. And now I see I have created one page with uh, the title. But this doesn't look very good. Uh, I like to add an image to my title page. Uh, how do you do that? Go to another module I created before because the images are already in there. See, example module. Yeah. Call it demo. I add a title page. title and now I want to add an image then I have extra options so I only need the the wizard the info uh, the, the form I have in the middle to create my page uh, you saw it I have a nice title page but sometimes you need more things then you have optional properties on the right side make it a bit bigger and you can choose from them the, uh, the ones above, they are connected to the title page itself. The general ones are always there on every page. So when I add a background image, um, here I can add my image. And I have a lot, lot of information, but the most important is here my image. Um, and I'm going to select an image. Then I press here on that arrow. And this is a very important thing because everywhere in Xerti where you add, want to add something, a PDF, an image, a video, whatever, you get um, an arrow like this and you go, when I click here, I open my media folder. And this media folder is connected to this learning object. So if I have a new um, learning object, I, my media folder is empty. In this case, your media folder is empty. In mine, there are a few uh, images. So in this case, I want to add my, the banner. 
and I already have it here. I will show you how you can get one if you don't have anything here. I click on it, double click, and it's added. And when I go to play now, I have my title and my image on the background. So what if you don't have an image in your image folder? You have here a, a little icon. It's very uh, small. It's the fourth one. It's a, a floppy with a green dot or something on it. When I click here, I, I'm in my computer. Then I can, can go to my images and I can add, uh, for example, my, the koala. And then the koala is added to my uh, media folder and I can double click on it to um, get it in my title page. Um, but in this case, I want to have this one. So when I click, click play, I have my first title page with an image on the background. I'm going to change my theme. I forgot that in this one to the Zerti theme. And then it looks like this, more like the example I showed you. Um, okay, are there any questions about adding a page and uh, adding the images? Does it work for the most of you? Can you please add in the chat? She says yes, no, it doesn't. Um, Heather, did you add a question in the chat? What did, didn't work? Okay, Joshua is going to help you. Yes. Okay, so I see a lot of yes, so then I go on. So we created our first title page. The next page I want to create is a page with a uh, text and image and maybe some audio. And that is when I click here on the plus but button, button um, I go to media and I choose the graphic and sound page. And in this case, I say I want it after my title page. So I go to the plus sign go to media and choose the graphic and sound page and I place it after the title page. If I do it before, no problem. I just can drag and drop it to the right place. So I created a, a new page, graphic and sound. We'll give it a name. Uh, the, the name of the page is not well because it's graphic image and sound. Um, here I can add some text. I'll just go in and fill in the form again. I want to have my text on the left side. And again, I can collect or get an image. Just I click on the arrow again. Go to my media folder, select an image. In this case, I will pick this one. Um, the size will be um, automatically. Um, and here you see description. And this description is for accessibility. When you go through a module with, for example, the tab, um, uh, the tab, uh, I don't key, <laughs> I don't know how, uh, how you call it, uh, for screen readers, for example, for people that are blind, um, they don't see the image, but they can hear what uh, what it is. So the screen reader will um, read out loud what's uh, saying here. So in this case, I will say uh, image uh, about uh, blah, blah. Um, so the... Um, the screen reader uh, uh, say, says this out loud and the, the blind person knows or the visual impaired person knows, okay, here's an image. Um, so I added an image now 
um, and I have some text. So what, how is it looks like? I press play again and I go to my second page and here I see my text and my image. When you use the, the form in Xerti, it always looks good. You don't have to do a lot. I need to add some more text, but it already uh, looks okay. Um, so I'm created a page now with uh, some uh, text and an image. Okay, can you add in the chat? You can try it out uh, if it works for you. Okay. Great, I see a few works again. I can imagine that some people are still trying. Okay, I see no big problems at the moment in the chat least. Okay, uh, so we have two pages now, um, a title page and a graphic and sound page. That's, um, uh, that's no interactive interactivity in it yet. So the next page we're going to create is a multiple choice uh, page. Again, I go to the plus sign and the multiple choice uh, page is on the interactivities. These are a lot of interactivities you can add. If you have a smaller screen, you have a, a scroll bar uh, on one of the sides. So you can uh, go and see all the pages that are in there. And I'm going to search for the multiple choice question. It's here and here. And I add it after the graphic and sounds page. And I call it uh, the MCQ. And again, the only thing I need to do is fill in the form to m create my multiple choice question. Um, here is some uh, instruction. Um, I will leave it like this and see where it uh, is later and I can change it later. And here I can add my question. So uh, what's the capital of, my English is not that good, so maybe I make errors, but uh, I hope you uh, forgive me. What's the capital of uh, France? Um, then I can choose a question type, a uh, single answer or multiple answer. A uh, single answer, one answer is right, multiple answer, there are more answers right. In this case, I say single answer and uh, the panel width is medium. I will come back to that later. And then I will add my answer. So my first answer is, uh, for example, Amsterdam. Uh, that's the label and I have to add it again because uh, it could be a long answer and then here I have a short answer but in this case um, it's the same and here I can give feedback uh, so here's some feedback on the answer of Amsterdam yeah I don't know what to tell more but um, you can imagine if you have a question where you can um, give more feedback then you can add the specific feedback for this answer here and it's false. I can create a new answer and that's uh, Paris. Paris. My 
added some feedback and this answer is correct. Um, now I go back to my uh, module to see what I created. When I press play, then I come to the front page and I have to click to go to the page where I'm working on. That's very annoying, for example, when you have 20 pages. So there is a, a, a short key. Um, if I'm here on the, on the third page and I go to shift and then press play, so shift on my uh, uh, keyboard and then play, then I, it opens on the page where I'm working on. Um, so here you see the question um, and here you see the introduction. Um, that could be text, but that could also be a video or an image. Uh, I can put everything I want there. Um, what's the capital of France? Now, for example, it's Amsterdam. Check. I get feedback um, that it's uh, incorrect in this case. Or I Paris and it's correct. Um, this is an interact interactivity and the results of this inter interactivity are stored. Um, in a learning record store or uh, is uh, a result for uh, adding to the grade book. Um, if you have more interactivities in one learning object, then it's the, uh, uh, the results together what make it pass or not. Okay, um, so this is my multiple choice question. Is there um, a question about the multiple choice question? There's also a possibility to add a quiz, for example, but that's a bit more work, so we don't do it now, but you can do it uh, if you want. Just try it out a bit. I will go to the next page in a minute. Wait, uh, what's added in the forum? And I noticed in the chat there were a couple people that had to drop off or maybe came in a little bit late. Um, so the, we do have the recording, so you guys can watch the recording later if you like, if you missed anything um, as Inga was going through the steps. Um, and we will have those accounts available for you. We'll leave them up and active. So you can always go in after the fact and, um, and try it out on your own while you watch the video. So don't worry if you didn't catch everything. Um, there's opportunities to kind of go back and review it again later. So um, you'll have that all available after the conference. Um... A different uh, Adam has a different uh, question type. That's that's uh, okay. You can't convert one type of a page to another, so you have to make a new page uh, if you want to have the multiple choice question. Uh, when adding an answer option, it says correct uh, or false. What does that mean? Um, uh, you have to choose as an editor if your answer is correct or false. And if it's false, they get automatically feedback uh, that you ha didn't have the right answer, even when you don't add anything in the feedback uh, text area. Um, and if it's uh, uh, correct, then they get the feedback that uh, it's correct. Answer X of Y instead of the MCQ. That's also okay, Adam. That doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. It's uh, uh, most important that you have uh, an interactivity so we can have some results later. Um, Romana, you uh, had uh, the MCQ and then press play to see, I think, what you created. Um, if you see the first page, then you can go to the next page here below and go to the MCQ question, or you press shift play, then you are automatically on that page. Okay. Um, I'm uh, moving on. Uh, I forgot something on the graphic and sound pages. I'm going back there. Um, you can add uh, audio to this page, and that's also 
an optional property um, and I can add audio here and I have to add an mp3 file and the mp3 file should be in my uh, media folder then I can double click on it and add it here. Um, really new is that you can create that mp3 full, um, file within Xerti itself. How do you do that? You go to you see a little um, sign here and when I click on it it opens an editor toolbar or we see editor toolbar and you can do a lot of things here I'm not going to display uh, explain that all but to get an audio file to, to record it you have a, a record button here it says also record audio so when I uh, choose that one I get an audio recorder and I can start uh, record my uh, audio and then when I'm ready I click on this button and um, then I can say okay uh, upload and close when I go now to my sound uh, field and I click here on my arrow then I see the recording and I can add this recording to my page so what did I create it now it I have added here um, added um, an audio file and beneath the image I can also have audio and this is also very useful uh, for accessibility so one more time if you want to have something uh, added in audio or kind, that kind of things in all the text fields you have the small icon here on the top so you can open the what you see is what you get editor toolbar and in that toolbar you have a lot of things but one of the things is the audio recorder and I can record audio I just start a recording uh, it's uh, recording now I can stop it I can even test it and see if it's okay and I can um, store it in my media folder um, what I also can do is create a player and then it will pl add a player here so instead of that you have the player I will throw this one away I have a player in the beneath the image I can have a player here what's just the same just uh, a very nice uh, thing that's very new in um, 30 and it is the C key a editor so um, for the ones that are using Sakai um, that is uh, the same so we have three pages now and we had a um, question from Heather about transcripts is there a place to add a transcript for an audio file uh, some pages we have already added the transcript um, and in the next release there will be the possibility to add, add the transcript file also to the audio player so uh, yes and no some pages they have it already uh, there is also a transcript viewer page for example but um, in the next release there will be more places to add transcripts to uh, okay then um, there is a question about the publish option um, when I uh, when I'm finished I always uh, say to people use the publish button because what you do is publish but also save it um, and, and now at this moment this learning object is saved if I don't do that and I close it and I forget it and I come in the next time um, my pages are possibly gone so use uh, the publish button a lot so we are going to create the next page and that is the interactive video page um, Christina there's no way to know that if you already clicked it uh, so just if you don't know click it again that doesn't uh, uh, matter 
the interactive video page. I go to the plus sign again and I go to the interactivities because there's an interactivity page and I go to the interactive video and I say uh, edit after my multiple choice question. You see when I created a title page I don't get any we call that nested pages uh, it's just one single page to fill in but for example the interactive video page and also the MCQ you have other uh, nested pages below and you can see that because you get um, a little plus sign before the page so for the MCQ there's also the little plus sign um, so I'm going to call this page the interactive video then we go to the this is the panel of the video so I'll add video um, I can add a video to Xerti itself, uh, but it's better to use, for example, a video from Vimeo or YouTube or uh, Peertube. Um, so I'm going to have a look at uh, YouTube. Is there a video about Sakai, for example? See? Yes, the product promo video. This is the. Uh, I have to wait. Overslaan. Yes, this is the the video. Uh, the only thing I have to do is pick up the URL. So here on the top, I can pick up the URL. Then I go back to my module, and. On video and then file, I can add the uh, the link here. This is again for accessibility. Video about Sakai, and um, I don't want to start it play uh, playing as soon as I open the page. I want the user to start play uh, use the play button so um, what I have now is I do shift play so I am on the interactive video page where I edit a video and I have no interactivities at the moment but I can uh, view the video anyhow and it's it's nicely um, uh, viewed like uh, uh, with a good responsiveness so if you look at on the a large screen or on a, a mobile phone it's uh, always okay now I'm going to add we some a, we had a few questions about video in the chat um, a couple people were asking uh, what types of video files does it, does it accept is there a size limit and also we had questions about um, people using videos that are published in like Kaltura or Warpwire would those work similar to like a YouTube where you paste in the link? Okay, to start with what kind of videos? Uh, if you add the video to Xerti itself, to the media folder, uh, then it should be an MP4. Um, and um, if you uh, uh, use uh, Vimeo or uh, YouTube kind of uh, platforms, um, you just pick up the URL and add that in the same field where you should add the link to the video. We always say try to use uh, a video platform and not uh, the, uh, the, the, the don't add the video in Xerti itself because it's those files are very 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 big and Xerti don't have a um, streaming server so if you have a big um, so okay. Yes. Um, if you have a very big video, it first has to to download it for the uh, user and then opens it. When you use, for example, Vimeo or YouTube, it uh, starts playing when you are downloading it, or uh, so you don't have to wait long. Um, and the question: uh, Does it use Kaltura or another video? platform at the moment uh, it's only Peertube, Vimeo, YouTube and MediaSite uh, but it is possible to um, 
uh, let us create um, a plugin for, for example, Cultura or for other platforms that you use. Um, it is prepared for that to add other platforms also to it, uh, to the uh, to the Xerti, uh, installation. Well, are there any other questions that I didn't? Yes, the same for Warpfire. Can we also use links for images and other media? Um, yeah, you can, but then you have a, a link to that uh, uh, media file, and um, we also we we yeah suggest that you add the image into Xerti itself. Um, otherwise, when that other image is, is gone, um, you certainly certainly have no image more anymore in your uh, Xerti project. Uh, security around the video and who has access to see what video? Is it based on where the tool is situated? Um, who access has to the video, that, that's what you do in your video tool. Um, or uh, who's going to see this, um, this module? If you say everyone can see this module, then everyone can see the video. If you say no, only the people that are accessing it uh, via our Sakai installation, then it's only the group that have the link in your Sakai installation. So that's how you restrict uh, the uh, security. Um, I'm going to add an interactivity now on the video. That's the next panel I have here. Um, I will call it actions and I will add some text. And um, so you add some text here and I will, um, I want to show this after say five seconds. Uh, after the video is started. You always have to add seconds in here because um, uh, also when it's more than 60, then it's 65, uh, not minutes and seconds, just so uh, seconds. And I want to pause the media. So I want to pause the video when this text appears. And I can add um, into the video where it uh, want, uh, where I want to have it. When I click on choose location, I get a white screen, but I keep in mind where how my video looks, uh, for example. And then I say I want a square here, there it should appear. Then I click here on the uh, OK button. And uh, now I created my first interaction on the video. So when I'm going to look what I created, I see the video. And when I start playing it, then after five seconds, you see the dot here, it will stop and it will show my uh, text. So it's very easy to add interactions to your to a video uh, that uh, you saw somewhere and you want to use in your lessons or to your own videos. Um, I also can add a multiple choice question. That works in the same way as, uh, for example, the multiple choice question you already made. So I, an MCQ, I want it in a different place. I want it to have it here, for example. Um, this is my question. Uh, it's radio buttons um, and it's a single answer. Uh, one answer is right. And my sync point is um, eight seconds. Eight seconds, and my answer is uh, one. That's false. New answer, two, and that's true. So I created very quickly um, an, uh, a multiple choice question in my video at eight seconds. So I'm going to look what I created. Here's the video. I started, I have two dots now. In the first one, in the first one, I get the uh, text. And when I, when I go on, I get the multiple choice question. There are 
all kind of configurations that you can um, keep um, uh, uh, a panel open or close it or um, don't see the multiple choice question but see an, uh, an icon instead of the multiple choice que uh, question that you have to open. So there are a lot of things in the extra optional properties you, you can use but this is the most, most basic way to create an interactive video. Um, let's go to the questions. Um, are there any questions? Uh, Jeremy asked if there's written documentation uh, in Xerti. Um, there are a lot of things, um, but they are mostly in Dutch. Um, there are also documentation in English, but that's all a bit um, older. So at the moment we are working really hard to create a new wiki with uh, all the pages in it. And it will be launched in our next release and that will be in December. Um, then there's also an English uh, wiki page with uh, documentation about, uh, about this. Okay, uh, John asks about the translation. Yeah, that could be added. Then uh, there's, uh, someone sh there is a translation tool. So someone at Longside has to translate it uh, from uh, English in the US uh, language. How did you add the screen under the text screen? Um, I don't know what you mean, Cassandra. Can you control background color and transparency for the text box? Uh, no, at the moment you can't. So it's uh, in your theme. In this case, it's white on or gray on the um, on the video. But if you have uh, another theme where it's, for example, orange or blue or transparent or whatever, you can. Um, have, it can have another color. If you are very handy with, for example, HTML and CSS, it's always possible on each page to add um, script or style. And when you add style, you can uh, add another color to your um, the background of your uh, text box. Um, is there an option to remove text on the video after a few seconds? Yes, Ramana, um, that's what you do with um, the sync point end. So I will say that, um, for example, I will show it. Big bitter, bigger. So after five seconds, the, the text box will show. And when I click um, play again, then after one second, because I said six seconds, then it should be gone. So you can uh, you can do uh, yeah play uh, play with it and add it as long as you want in there. Okay, so this is the uh, interactive video page. We created a small learning object now. Um, I um, Maybe we have time later to look into the 360 page, but um, the only page I wanted to add now for your own modules is the result page. And that's very simple. You go to the uh, tracking XAPI and there you see a results page and you add them that and at the end. Results. And I want full results. And this is the only thing you have to do. So now I'm going to do my um, whole module from the top to the bottom. So this is my title page, my uh, graphic and sounds page. Um, my answer is uh, Paris. Oh, that's good. This is the video. looking at the video and um, here's the text go on and then I get a question the answer is two. Oh, my answer is correct I go on I can look at the video uh, further and then I have the results page and there you see my average is 100% my uh, completion is 100% because I did all the pages I um, at the time I used was uh, 34 seconds and here are the results of the 
multiple choice question and interactive video. And you see, I've completed it and my score was 100%. And here below, you have specific results. That's now only two things, but you can imagine if you have a quiz or more interactivities on one page, um, then it would be there. And your student can also download a PDF file with all the results and the answers in it. So you now you created uh, a very small learning object uh, to uh, add to your Sakai. Um, so I'm now going to close this one. So you have uh, a few pages created. And I go to my, let me see, uh, here. This is my example module. Uh, you have your own example in your own Xerti instance. And now we have to make it a link or an LTI link to add it to Sakai. Um, we use this one to edit the, mo the module, and this is um, the properties about this module. So I click on the properties, and there's a lot of information here, but for you the most important at the moment is LTI XAPI. And there you click on all the boxes. And you can add here full name and email address. And then um, click on update. So you have those four clicked on. And then you clicked on update. And this link, uh, I think Sakai is using 1.1. So this link is the link you're going to use in 30. Okay, and um, Wilma already have uh, steps written up for this part. Um, so, uh, Wilma, um, is it okay that I uh, hand it over to you and that you show how you add it in Sakai and how it looks in the gradebook? Sure, yeah. I, um, I did some uh, screen captures, but then if, if anybody has questions, we can, we can go into a live course. Um, and just to let you guys know, I have a, um, a site set up for all of the attendees in Sakai. Each person should have their own Sakai sandbox course. So if you refresh or maybe look at your list of courses um, in the TriSakai server, you should have one that says Sakai VC 22 and then like 00. One zero zero two, a string of numbers for the different sites. Um, so you should, you should have one of those. Yeah. Um, Inga, I think your audio was. Oh, sorry, bad. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so these are the steps for getting the information that you need out of Xerti so we can plug it into Sakai. Um, now, there is some LTI setup that needs to happen with your Sakai administrator. We've already done that on TriSakai. So um, if you were going to try this out in a pilot or something like that, we'd work with you to, to get it set up as an external tool in your system. Um, so that piece we're not going to go through today because that's more of an administrator kind of piece um, that only needs to be done once for the institution. Um, but I'm going to show you the part where as a, a faculty member or a course designer, you would actually add it to a course. So um, you would first select your object in Xerti and then go to properties. It's a little eye icon up at the top to go to properties for that item and then go to the um, LTI API tab and you want to make sure that these two boxes are checked at, at a minimum um, these two boxes are checked the lti um, we do support lti 1.3 but we've found that uh, in like assignments and and lessons it seems to be using the 1.1 version i always check both boxes though so um, it's not going to hurt anything to select both of those now oops sorry um, the uh, XAPI, we don't currently have our learning record store set up for TriSakai um, on our instance of Xerti. So that is coming, but it's not currently working. So I wouldn't worry about the XAPI right now, um, but we will have that available for folks who want to try it out as part of the pilot. We just don't have it for today's session. Um, so today we're just going to be using the LTI piece of it that's hooked into TriSakai right now. 
Um, so then once you update that, you'll get those two links. And like, um, like Inga showed you, just copy and paste that first one. So we're going to copy the, um, the launch URL uh, for that particular object. And then that is going to actually, you're going to paste it into Sakai. So then you'll want to go to your sandbox site in Sakai, um, maybe open another tab or something. Um, and you should have something that, that looks kind of like this, Sakai VC22 and then a number. Um, that's your sandbox where you're the instructor. And we put a few demo students in there, but, um, but everybody should have an individual course. If you don't, let us know in the, in the chat and we will um, get that, uh, get you added into a, a sandbox site. Um, so I'm going to go here and to add content, I'm, I'm showing you the lessons way of adding it first. Um, go to add content, add external tool in lessons. And then you should see Xerti because it's already, like I said, been set up as an external tool for this system. So you'll select Xerti. And then you get an opportunity to give it a title. So this is going to be what the link says in Sakai. So you would probably name it, you know, whatever your object is called. In, in this case, I called it quiz, but it could be, you know, module one or, um, you know, Xerti. Uh, unit or whatever you called your learning object. Um, and then the launch URL, the one that you got in the properties for the Xerte object, that's what you paste in here. So you paste that in and you hit save, and then it's going to take you back to lessons and you should see a link to that item. Now you'll notice um, that I, I went ahead and hit edit here. If you click on it, it'll preview for you. Sometimes it doesn't always preview the way you want it to show up. So you might need to tweak it a little bit. Maybe you want it to open in a new window, or maybe you want to tweak the size that it opens. So if you don't want to do that, um, you can click on edit once the item is in there and you can choose if you wanted it to open in a new window, you could just select that radio button or what I um, will do a lot of times is just give it a height. So in this case, I gave it a height of 800 so it'll scale the text a little bit better. Um, and then I hit update. And once you do that, if you just click on the item itself, then it will open for you. And in this case, it, it opened up in a new lessons page. So you'll see um, the navigation hip here is from lessons, but this is my object that I added in there. It's a, a quiz that I created as an object in, in Xerti. So that's what that looks like um, embedded on the page. But uh, again, you could have it open in a new window if you prefer. Um, now it will send the scores to the gradebook when students complete the item. So you'll see um, kind of some blank scores until actually somebody goes in and takes it. So you have to actually go in as a student and complete the item before you'll see a score in the gradebook. Um, but once they do, those scores get sent over automatically. So they can be tallied up with the rest of your course grades um, in Sakai. I see a couple of people saying that they don't have um, the sandbox site and no Xerti. Is Derek still on the call? Derek, are you on there? Did he drop off? Derek dropped off. Let me go. Click I'm on. here. I'm trying to hit the unmute button. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Um, can you check on those folks and make sure that they have um, sandbox sites and also the, um, the Xerti? tool make sure it's open for all sites to find it um because it should be available for all um sites on the server so if you're in tri-sakai you okay if you're in tri-sakai and you do not have that sandbox course once again uh go with your email address there and uh i'll yeah. make sure you have one added yeah let me i went through yeah. most of the list yesterday and i thought i had everybody but let me go into Trisakai real quick and just show you. You do have to be on Trisakai. If you're on a different server, you're not going to see it. Um, so let's see. I'm going to go in here. And you should have a site that looks kind of like this, although I think the image is different. The image didn't get copied over. <laughs> but if you go into Lessons, 
um, add content, uh, oops, add content, add external tool. You should have a link here that says Zerte. So are folks not seeing that? Okay, I do see some folks that are seeing it. So, okay, great. Yeah, so it should be available for you to choose. So you would just choose it here and then put your tool title, whatever you want the link to be, and the launch URL that you got in Xerti. That's what you paste in there. And that will um, automatically set it up so that those scores go back to your gradebook. So the other way, there's more than one way to do LTI in Sakai. Um, if you prefer to do it in, as an assignment as opposed to a lesson, um, you can actually create it in the assignment tool. So there's also the ability to add LTI links there. And um, I'll walk you through that process as well if you want to try it out. So you would go to the assignment tool and add a new assignment. And I'm not going to walk through all the assignment settings, but if you scroll down a bit, um, you'll see that there's an option to choose the, your submission type. And so you want to check the external tool option from or select that from the drop down. And then you'll get this little button here that tells you to select an external tool. So that lets me choose again from the external tools that are currently available. And you should see Zerti on there as one of them. So you can choose Zerti as an external tool. And then um, you get a very similar screen to the one that you got in lessons because it's kind of the same thing. You just got to it a different way. Um, so you put in the title and that's going to be the title of your um, assignment and uh, the launch URL again that you copied out of Zerti item properties and then hit save. So that will drop it in as an assignment. And then if you plan to grade it, if it's something that has points associated with it, which it probably does if you added it as an assignment, um, then you probably want to select this grading um, section as well. So if you want to grade the assignment, you need to give it some points, and you probably want to create a new gradebook item for that uh, score. So you would choose your desired grading um, specifications and then you can go down and post the assignment um, so once you do that you can um, again you'll see scores when people submit it but they come into the assignment tool first so just a heads up that you'll see them here but you won't see them in the gradebook until you release grades so it's like like when you're grading um, assignments you have an opportunity to put them in there and grade everything all you know ahead of time and then when you're ready for the whole class to see their scores then you release the grades it's a similar concept so you will see if people have um, started the object or not if they've started the Zerti object um, then you'll see that they've actually submitted it and it's been graded if they haven't accessed it you'll see the not started no submission so this stuff does track the activity in the LTI um, and then when they do actually submit, you'll see a score. But what you need to do so that students actually see it and so that it shows up in the grade book is, is hit the release grades link. And that gives you a little check mark in this column and that sends it to the grade book. So, um, so that way you and your students will, will see that um, score in the grade book along with the rest of the grades in your course. So I put the link to these um, slides in the chat. It's available in our um, conference site where we have all the presentations that people have uploaded that folder. So if you go in the conference site to the folder for presentations, the shared Google Drive, um, you should be able to find it there as well. But I put the um, the link to this, uh, this slideshow in uh, the big blue button chat if you wanna go back and review any of these steps. Well, that is a question uh, about from Jack. Once I have enabled the LTI support and insert in Sakai, am I able to make edits to the LOR in Zerti? Uh, are you able to edit the learning object in Zerti? Um, gosh, you know, I oh, the tried. LOR is the learning object. 
okay yeah, <laughs> yeah that that is possible um mm -hmm. but then uh, you could change uh, the uh, information that is in there for, for example when you have a question and first the answer was uh, a and now it's b um then the results of everybody what did it before are changed so you have to be careful uh, when you change interactivities in a learning object but you can edit all kind of things in 30 or add even pages to it uh, when it's uh, enabled via LTI support. That's a great question and that's good to know Inga. Yeah so if you did have something where you had a certain number of points you want to make sure that the points didn't change because that might mess up your your grades a little bit and also if there are any answer changes that could affect people who took it earlier yeah. um, if they get a different version of it. Uh, yeah, you do have to have a student submission before you'll see any scores in the gradebook. We did create those demo users, um, which they're enrolled in a whole slew of sites, so you might have to search for yours. But if you go into your sandbox, um, and I can't remember if I put them in my, my template site or not. Uh, nope, they're not in here. Um, but you, if you go to manage participants, you'll see some users in there. If you just put that user ID and the password um, SVC2022, that should get you in as that student. Um, and then you can try it out. Or if you want to try it with like just another email address, you can go to add participants and, and plug in an email address that you own, um, you know, maybe like your Gmail account or a different email or something and, um, and enroll that user as a student in your site, then you can log in as that user on Trisakai and test it out. Either way will work, but you can also use those um, those pre made student accounts that we dropped into all of your sandboxes. Um, so that's that's why we did that. Oh, Cindy is mentioning that it looks really big in the Sakai window. Yeah, it, it will default to a large size. That's why I usually will edit um, the properties on the item. So um, let me see if I have something in here. No, I, I didn't actually add it in this course. Um, but if you go to, here, and under display options, when you edit the item, you can choose the height and it will scale the text smaller. And if you open it in a new window, it, it seems to resize to fit the window better as well. So it depends on the size of your object. If it's a large object, you need a lot of real estate to display properly, then maybe you want it to open in a new window. Um, but if it's something that can fit in the frame, it's just not scaling the way you want. Um, if you just put a height in here, and sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error to see what height works the best for your content, um, you can adjust that in Sakai to make it appear a little more um, appropriately sized for the course. Well, it looks like there are two more questions hanging out in the chat that may not have been addressed. Uh, one from Robin Wood who asks, did you say I had to have student submission before the gradebook will populate? Yes, that is true. You do have to have a student submit before you see anything in the gradebook. And another from Lauren Finley who says, uh, if you update a Xerti project that you already linked to Sakai, will it be updated in Sakai as well? Yes, if it's something that you linked to Sakai, um, that has, you know, content or you, maybe you added some new pages, it's going to show up in your, your um, Xerti module when it, it displays. Um, again, you just want to be careful if it was anything scored that the grading isn't affected. Um, so you want to make sure that if people have already gone through that module that their scores aren't going to get messed up because you changed the answers or you changed the point value. But the new content will display. Yes, you do have to publish for that to show up. 
<laughs> so yeah, I publish like crazy in Xerxes just because sometimes I forget, you know, it opens in new windows and stuff and I have like 15 million windows open at one given time. So um, yeah, I am constantly hitting that publish button just in case um, to make sure that it's saving as I go. Christina asks what uh, template you use for the escape room and how long it took you to create it. Okay. Um, the escape room was a lot of fun. If you guys didn't experience it, you should chat with some of the folks who did. Um, it was fun watching you guys play. So <laughs> let me show you um, what this escape room looks like in Xerti and kind of the, the, the back end. Um, so this is my, my Sakaiger escape room object. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this so you can see kind of how many pieces are in here. So these are all the different areas in the room. And then each one of these um, has stuff underneath it, some more than others. Um, like some of them have multiple uh, hot spots. Some of them have um, multiple scenes where the scene changes. So you, you do something and then something else happens. And so then it, it opens a whole nother scene. So you can see it, it kind of, it's like an onion. There's a lot of layers here. Um, this was quite time consuming to create, um, but I was doing a lot of discovery and research as I did it. Um, it took me probably, I would say the better part of two weeks to bring it all together. But again, a lot of that was not necessarily in Xerti. A lot of it was tracking down the puzzles that I wanted to do and working in Photoshop to do the 360 degree images that I wanted to display and you know, finding Creative Commons or iStock you know, media assets that I could use. So it's kind of a big ball of wax. Um, but it, it was uh, used, I used that 360 image quite a bit. Um, I also used a few other page types. So this right here is just a title page. Um, this one is like the button um, sequence page um, where you get a message and then you have to click a button to display something else. Um, the campus map that was, and here, let me preview that for you guys. This is a hotspot image. So it actually um, is showing an image with hotspots on it. And so I drew in a hotspot where you go and then once you get there, you get a 360 degree image of that room. Um, and then the room itself has hotspots in it for the things that you interact with and discover. So um, yeah, so that's kind of how the, the escape room worked. I don't know if I answered your question, Christina. Did I answer your question? I'm waiting to see what she writes. Yeah. Um, okay, great. And Dave wants to know if it's best to sketch it out before building it. Um, that would probably help. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I kind of built it as I went. I was sort of sketching it out in my head, but I didn't create a big storyboard. Um, that would probably be a more more uh, logical way to do it. But like I said, I was doing a lot of discovery because it was the first time I'd used Deserte to build an escape room. So um, a lot of it was build as you go. But I think that if I do another one, I would be more efficient and probably do some more storyboarding up front. But it did help to um, identify the different areas that the user was going to be to interact with and um, to uh, have those like once I got the different places on the map and the different scenes that I was building. Um, I was able to put them in order and figure out how people were going to navigate from one scene to the next scene. Um, so it was, uh, it was a lot easier once I got those pieces in place. All right, were there any other questions that I missed? Lauren said it reminded her of a Nancy Drew game. <laughs> yeah. 
or missed. Yeah, I play a lot of video games, so you probably had a little bit of homage to like Resident Evil and you know Mist and you know maybe a few other games you might have seen. All right, any other questions on the escape room? For those of you who didn't see it, I'll just show you the first scene. I'm gonna I'll play it from the beginning just so you can kind of see how it looks. But, um, and I don't think, actually, let me, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment and then I'll reshare because I don't think I turned on my audio this time. Let me share system audio. So there's a little bit of audio in the first scene. Um, so this is kind of, and we did it as a timed activity in teams. So it was a great team building exercise. Um, but we're, we're saving Sakaiger from the zombie virus. And, um, and so this is that button sequence that I told you about. So you read the little intro message and then you have to click a button to see the actual email. And then you read his email. He's basically um, asking for help. He's been infected. Um, and then you go to the campus map, which takes you to your first location, which is the exam room where our poor little uh, Dr. Sakaiger is um, struggling with being infected. And the first hotspot is just kind of a, um, and you'll see there, you can hear him bang. That spot and open the door. <laughs> and he's chained himself up in here, and he's a zombie. And um, and this is that 360 image, and there's clues and things in here to get you started. And you have to do some stuff and go all around campus to find the things you need to make the cure to um to help him not be a zombie anymore so so that's all i'm going to show you because if you did want to play the exam room at some other time or i'm sorry the escape room at some other time i don't want to spoil it for you but um, but that's kind of what it looks like so <laughs> lauren wants to know where's that darn hidden safe yeah you guys got a few little spoilers in here just knowing um, where, you know, what some of the things are called. I tried not to click in too far to show you all the solutions to things. Cause if I went into some of those hot spots, you would see more information about the solutions. And I didn't want to give that away just in case you decide to play it. <laughs> yeah, I hate spoilers. So I didn't want to spoil it for you guys. And it's uh, it's a lot of work to make it, but it's um, uh, very uh, addictive. Uh, is that a good word? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was obsessed with it. Yeah. While I was building it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a great way to um, get your students uh, going. Uh, for, mm -hmm. for example, with a new subject or with uh, uh, onboarding or whatever. Yeah, it would be great for, you know, something themed around your campus. Um, you could have images, you know, that you take people on a tour. You could have something that's built around your subject matter. Maybe they have to solve, um, you know, puzzles related to your discipline. Like maybe they have to find information out of their textbook or um, they have to, you know, watch a lecture and, you know, get some information from the lecture to solve a puzzle. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can do that to kind of um, make it more gamified, make it more of a team building, collaborative, immersive experience. So, um, so Azerti is great for that. So it's, it's so flexible. You can build all sorts of things. And um, the templates that are in here, all the different pages, like, um, let me just, I don't know if, if Inga showed you, I was probably messing with my audio. So I, I tuned out for a little bit in the beginning. Um, don't worry about that delete lock file. If you ever get that, that just means you have it open in two windows, which I often do. Um, <laughs> or you didn't hit play and publish when you when you left out the last time. Um, so there's all these different media types. So, I mean, you can see there's a whole, whole bunch of these in here of different types of interactions that you can do. 
and there's examples in here that you can view. Um, so and again, the tracking X, X API, we're working on that piece. So those, if you try them, they're not going to work right now, at least not on our install, but they will once we get our LRS set up. Um, but there's all kinds of things you can do. And as an exercise for myself, when I was learning Xerte, I actually built out some content objects. And let me, I'll, I'll put this in here so you guys can peruse later if you feel like it. Um, this is uh, just a collection of different objects that I created. Um, and this is using one of the page types to just sort of organize them a little bit into groups of links. The featured ones are a few of the favorites um, that I often show people, but I, all these other tabs here are just like the different page types. So, um, so you'll see there's a bunch of different page types that I've put in here. Um, like, for example, this. And what I did was I, I tried to pick from a variety of, of academic disciplines so that people could sort of see their content in, you know, a new way. And it doesn't look like it's opening really well for me, probably because I'm screen sharing. And this is linking to um, the Zerte server in the Netherlands because I haven't moved everything over yet. Okay, look, it's loading. There we go. Um, so this is like a poem and you can have it read. Section number one of well, Proof Rock well, and Other Observations by T.S. Eliot. Actually read this LibriVox recording poetry. is in the public domain. Read by Elise D. The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. So I'm not going to make you listen to the whole thing, but um, but if you are interested in looking at any of these, you can go through and browse through all the different types. Um, there's uh, quite a few different interactive ones. Um, the decision tree is kind of like a, uh, uh, that branching scenario that you can create. Um, there's even, uh, let's see, yeah, the QR code one is kind of cool. You can create QR code pages if you wanted, for example, people to schedule office hours or something. So there's all kinds of content in here. Feel free to explore to get some inspiration. Um, these are ones that I built as I was learning how the different pages worked. Yeah, and, and Wilma, I think you are now working on this a few months and you already can create a, uh, an escape room like that. Um, but in the beginning, it uh, it takes some time to get used to Xerti, and uh, you have to start at the beginning before you can create uh, that uh, beautiful escape rooms or whatever. Um, so, uh, but it's not very difficult, but you just have to start and do it. I don't know if you can say something about that, uh, Wilma? Yeah, I mean, it takes a bit of getting used to um, because it is very form based and that's both good and bad because a lot of us are used to sort of these WYSIWYG editors. Um, and so it takes a bit of of ramp up time. Let me see if I still have one open. Uh, so I don't. Yeah. So to get into the the sort of habit of filling out the, the forms and to figuring out what all these optional properties are, um, some of them have some really helpful tool tips. So I definitely recommend that. But once you kind of get into the uh, the rhythm of you know adding things here and then playing to preview, um, it really starts to come together. So what I like to do, I have dual monitors. Um, I don't know what I would do with just one monitor all the time, but <laughs> so I usually have the have it previewed on one monitor while I'm working in the other, and I'm constantly every time I add something, I'll hit play so I can see what it looks like. Um, and so that's that's useful to make these little tweaks and things as you go back and forth. But um, but it, it is really nice that the the forms are sort of predictable. You kind of know that all your content's going to be in one of these places. And there's optional stuff, but usually the main things for any given page type are provided for you. So if you just fill in some of these boxes, um, you're going to get something that's you know workable. Um, and that's kind of nice. Um, and it is, it is possible to customize. You can choose from any of these themes that we have loaded up or we can create new ones. Um, it does take a bit of CSS. And so we usually create these on the back end and make them available in this dropdown. Um, 
but uh, there's a few in here. And if there are, are, are particular color patterns or if you wanted one that sort of matches your institution, um, the folks at Longside would be happy to create some um, appropriate you know, themes for your institution if, if you're interested in that. Josh, did you want to add anything? No, I don't think so. I mean, I've been adding some stuff in the in the chat. I mean, I, I would just reiterate that we've heard from the folks at the University of Nottingham, where Xerti originated, that the forms-based UI uh, allows instructional designers to create interactions. And then because forms are easy to fill out, instructors can then go in and easily change content, add content. Um, so there, there, there is that. I mean, it, it's, it is definitely a learning curve. It is definitely not what we're you know, accustomed to expect at this point, but it has its advantages and it's definitely learnable as, as, as we saw the, uh, the, um, the escape room was, was really quite a big hit. Yeah. And also the, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, was, I was just going to say one other thing, which is that Longsite expects to begin providing hosting services for Xerti and Materia as well, starting in 2023. So, I've been, uh, you know, pestering you with the form for those who would like to chat about a pilot. So we are we are here to chat about that kind of stuff. I may reach out a little bit later on to those of you who've been here to see if you have you have interest. So definitely glad to help get you set up in the spring for some exploration and some discovery, and then looking ahead to what can be beyond that. Inga, were you going to add something? Um, yeah, about um, uh, the form-based uh, way of working. Uh, Xerti started uh, originally to make it very easy for um, uh, teachers to create materials. And in the beginning, you only had a form and you filled it in and then you had a learning object. Um, uh, but uh, people were more and more and then you get the, the extra properties, all the different pages. Um, so um, the, the problem with Xerti, it's not difficult to create things, but it's uh, what I said in the beginning, uh, difficult to know what to choose because it's a lot. Um, the positive side of that is that it's very flexible. Um, you can do, you can create whatever you want with it. Um, and if you uh, uh, um, want, just want to have a quiz and a text page, is really easy to do. But if you want to change the colors or uh, the buttons or hide buttons, it's also possible. So it's easy for people that don't have any um, background on developing, and it's easy for people that know um, uh, something about coding and that kind of thing. They also can add things to it. So um, that's what I want to add to um, to that question. Yeah, and we only we touched the surface of the the analytics piece with the dashboard. We didn't really get into that today because we don't have the um, LRS set up on on Trisakai. But that's another area where. Um, we're looking to, you know, expand into, you know, providing more data on these learning objects. So that's something that we're also looking to um, to move into. And hopefully, if if we have the LRS pulling data in from Xerti, we can also add events from Sakai to the same record store. So, um, so that's kind of some exciting, uh, you know, opportunities yeah. in the analytics area. Yes, and uh, the Xerti uh, community is working really hard on all this, the learning analytics uh, parts um, and also the adaptive learning, what's connected to it. Um, mm -hmm. So there are a lot of new things each time there is a new uh, release. So I hope you had a quick view in Xerti and um, uh, it created some pages so you can start to play with it. There is a lot more to tell about it. Um, 
So uh, if you have any questions, you can ask uh, uh, Wilma, I think, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or <laughs> or me. Uh, if I don't know, I'll find the answer. From yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Well, thank I'd you. Say, guys. We start are, with we Wilma. Are, you know, st stump us first, and we can we can then stump Inga iteratively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that way they'll, they'll bug us first. We'll be the first line of defense there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but we are, we are out of time. We're at our, our uh, noon uh, ending time. So I really appreciate all of you for attending. And Inga, thank you so much for powering through, even though you're sick. So very much appreciated. Um, and I hope you guys learned some stuff. I know we didn't have a whole lot of time to dive into the real nitty gritty, but at least you got your hands on it. Maybe you can play with it a little bit or rewatch the recording for some of the steps that Inga went through in the beginning. Um, and again, we have that form available if you're interested in piloting. And um, we're, we're really excited to work with folks that want to kind of kick the tires a little bit and, and uh, see how it would work at their institution. So, um, so thank you again, all of you for joining. And uh, I'm gonna transition over now to our um, bingo game room. It's a separate room, so we'll have to exit this one and go into the other one. Um, I realized just now that I didn't build a break in, so I'll give it a couple minutes for people to make their way over and then we'll start bingo. But if you're interested in winning a prize, we just still have, um, we're going to be awarding prizes for bingo as well. So um, if you'd like to play a quick round, we'll be over in the bingo room in just a couple minutes. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you over there. <laughs>